Welcome into Palolo Points. I'm Brandon Stranger, Sports Map Houston. I am joined by Charlie Palolo of ESPN 97.5, 92.5. And if you have not already, please hit subscribe on the channel. We really do appreciate it. Charlie, let's talk some Astros. Over the weekend, the Astros got a big dose of reality served to them in the form of a three-game sweep against the bottom-dwelling Texas Rangers. And we knew the Astros' bullpen was suspect. We've talked about it here. But man, did this shine a bright light on it. One of the guys whom the team touted as a possible savior was 25-year-old fireballer Eli Paredes. So far this year, we've seen him struggle to get outs and strikes. Charlie, is, is this, as you see it, is this mental, physical, mechanical, and how much this has to do with how quickly Dusty thrust him back into high leverage situations? Yeah, whether he's finding his legs or just a young pitcher for all he flashed last year, I don't think the pinpoint demand was automatically associated with Enoli Paredes. So it's a grab bag down there. And because Dusty Baker has a track record of some questionable handling of pitchers as a guy who's never going to be confused with being a master tactician, uh, it's logical to point to Dusty sometimes. Uh, certainly the end of game stuff Sunday against the Rangers was, well, let's go with extremely. Uh, borderline as decision-making goes. Uh, but you can push all the buttons you want. They're not high-quality buttons. Other than Ryan Presley, if you had one inning to get through from the Astros' bullpen right now to save the planet, who would you next trust after Presley, from Joe Smith to Andre Scrub to the injured guys to Paredes? I, I don't think there's a, a go-to answer on that, so they're going to have to work their way through it. And then hope once the starters get healthy in Urquidy and Fromber and Odo Rizzi and push to the bullpen, presumably Garcia and Javier, uh, that hope that they are good answers and adapt well to maybe becoming primary setup guys. I mean, Presley is not to be confused with Mariano Rivera, uh, but I think he's a solid closer. When he's healthy, he'll be capable in that, in that role. But bridging starting pitchers who too often don't go beyond five, five and a third. It was a relapse start over the weekend for Lance McCullers. Took him 105 pitches to get through five innings. Well, if you're, le if you're asking your, your lesser talented pitchers, the guys who aren't good enough to be starters or be end of game relievers, you're asking them to cover more of the fifth, sixth, seventh innings. Sometimes you're just going to light kegs of dynamite. And, well, you light enough kegs of dynamite, and sometimes they go off on you. On this channel, we've spoken a lot about the Astros, you know, being patient because they have guys coming back uh, from injury into the starting rotation. And that would, you know, eventually push some of these, the back end guys into the sport roles, like what you just talked about. And you and I spoke about Christian Javier being one of those people that would be in the support role. But Javier now is also struggling with his command and struggling with walks. What are you seeing out of Javier, and how much do you trust that a guy his age can figure it out and find his stuff? Yeah, I'd, uh, I'd be in support of Talisman if you're, if you're into good luck charms because as, as good as he looked uh, in 2020 and as fast as he started this season, he's never been heralded as an elite pitching prospect. You know, even the really good pitchers – aren't going to have an ERA of 270 each month of the season. Throw seven innings, give up two runs each time they're out there. Uh, the number of young guys, the number of unproven guys without durability of performance, uh, I just think if it's a, a seismograph, it's just going to be a wild ride of some bumps, and, and you hope the, uh, the aftershocks are, are minimal because you're going you're gonna to have a pretty good rumble uh, from time to time when you have a weekend of them and they come against the last-place team that throws the Silver Boot Series into question for the season. Uh, there's some there's some consternation there, uh, but it makes for both a fun and interesting homestand because Dodgers, Padres, Red Sox. Dodgers have won seven in a row, even while dealing with injuries. The Padres with a healthy, otherworldly Tatis, nine in a row starting the week. And then the Red Sox maybe leveling off a little bit, but still atop the American League East. So uh, this is a, a nice, uh, nice not quite mid-season barometer for the Astros uh, facing the varsity after a weekend getting whipped by the freshmen. Now, and it's obviously not an ideal time to run into those three teams like you talked about. How much really can we take away from this, these, these three uh, series in a row? I mean, this is a murderer's row as much as there is going to be this season uh, because even after that, then they go to Toronto. So you've got a big stretch against a lot of really competitive teams. What will we be able to glean from this? 
uh, let's go glass uh, three quarters full. And if they rip off seven out of 10 or seven out of nine, two, three, four, Dodgers two, Padres three, Red Sox four. So they go seven and two, six and a three, great homestand. It won't establish the Astros as a superpower. Conversely, oh no, two and seven, they looked in over their heads. Look, for all of the short season last year, the Astros looked in over their heads. Uh, in terms of elite level, 29 and 31. And then you get hot in October. The whole point is to get there uh, almost no matter what happens on this homestand. It's not like they can fade for contention. Uh, but with the Yankees really rolling, Oakland having rewrited its ship, it's starting to lose contact uh, with at least the leaders. The A's within the division, the top couple teams in the wild card. So if they have a three and six disappointing homestand, uh, it'll be exasperating and more uh, warning bells will be flashing. But it would not mark disaster, uh, especially if you're still in the process of getting your rotation back intact. Uh, I do think between now and the end of July, one question is, with the Astros seemingly self-imposed salary cap, not wanting to go above the luxury tax threshold, uh, if there is a market of some decent setup reliever pitcher types, a la Ryan Presley a couple of years ago, uh, would the Astros say, okay, we'll spend to acquire that guy, wouldn't deliver certainty, but would give you more than all the question marks behind Presley right now in that Astros bullpen. At what point does James Click really start to feel that pressure like he has to make a move for that bullpen? I think it would take probably another whole month because they can bide their time, let us get the rotation guys back, some guys we can go a little deeper into the games and maybe ease some of the burden on the bullpen, and we're going to fortify that bullpen from within – uh, but if you get toward uh, July 4th, and again, it's the standard by which we evaluate the Astros, and it should be a high one, as their own standards are. But they're eighth starting the week, eighth out of 15 American League bullpens in earned run average. So it's not just a disaster night in, night out, but the teams they're behind in bullpen ERA include the Red Sox and the Yankees and the Rays and the A's and the Indians are all teams that you're presumably fighting for playoff positioning or to be in the playoffs. So I don't think you want to just accept mediocrity that, well, it could be worse because you're better than the Tigers and the Orioles and the Twins in the bullpen. Uh, so the ownership level budget decision and then Click, who's so accustomed to his tenure with the Rays of squeezing more out of less and finessing budgets, acquire the live arm that let Brent Strom work a little magic with, uh, so I don't think I don't think we're in a, a five alarm fire type mode. Uh, but when there's enough smoke, and the more deeply you get into the season, if the smoke is still billowing, you probably should go look for a new hose or two in that bullpen. 